When getting a new car, the biggest decision you'll have to make is whether to finance the purchase with a loan or to lease the car. Which choice you make can have a big impact on how much you'll end up paying. The dealer, of course, will never explain this to you though, because it's not in their interest. They wanna make the most money in a deal, whereas you wanna pay the least amount possible. In this video, I'll explain how a lease works and how financing with a loan works, and then we'll crunch the numbers on a real life comparison of the cost of each one. From this, you'll learn how to analyze your own deals and to pick the best option for you. I was actually a little surprised with how this real life example turned out, which is why you need to look at each deal carefully to make your decision. First, a quick explanation of the difference between financing and leasing a car. When you finance a car, you borrow the money, meaning you take out a loan to pay for the purchase of the car. You will own the car immediately when you close on the purchase. Closing is when you sign all the paperwork and hand over the money. Say you're buying a car for $30,000. If you make a down payment at closing of $5,000, then the loan would be for the remaining $25,000. The bigger your down payment, the smaller the loan. Then over the term of the loan, meaning the length of the loan repayment period, you pay off the loan in equal monthly payments. If for example, it's a five-year loan, then you'll make 60 monthly payments over five years. Each payment consists of a partial repayment of the amount due on the loan plus interest. At the end of the term, the loan will be fully paid off. The other option is to lease a car. A lease is basically just a long-term rental. You will not own the car. You would make monthly payments over the lease term, and then at the end of the term, you could return the car or buy it from the lease company for a pre-agreed amount. Or you might be able to use the car as a trade-in towards another lease or the purchase of a car. I'll explain that last one in a minute. A lease usually has a lower monthly payment than if you bought the car with a loan. Here's why. When you finance the purchase of a car, as you pay off that loan, you are paying off the full price of the car. A lease is different. With a lease, you only pay for some of the price of the car. For example, say you've got a three-year lease on a $30,000 car. If the lease assumes that the car will be worth $20,000 when the lease ends in three years, then the lease is assuming the car will lose $10,000 in value. Therefore, the lease payment you are being charged will be roughly the $10,000 in value that the car will lose divided by 36 months, which is a payment of $278 per month plus a finance charge on the borrowed money. If you make a down payment on the lease of $5,000, then you are paying part of that expected loss of value of $10,000 up front. So you would only need to cover the remaining $5,000 with your monthly payments. The payments would then be calculated as $5,000 divided by 36 months, which would be $139 per month plus interest. Therefore, the bigger the down payment, the smaller the monthly payment will be. By the way, the interest rate charged in a lease is called the money factor. When doing a lease, be sure to ask what the money factor is and how you can make it lower. At the end of the lease term, you decide what to do with the car. Your choices are option one, you could just return the car and be done with it. If you're doing this, there are two potential fees to know about. First, you'll owe additional money if you drove more miles in total than the mileage limit of the lease. And second, if you are returning the car in worse physical condition than the lease allows, you would owe a fee for excess wear and tear. Option two, you could buy the car for the buyout price. Then you would own it and do whatever you want with it, including immediately reselling it if you wanted to. And option three for a lease, if at the end of the lease term, the car has a market value higher than your buyout price, then you could use the lease car as a trade-in towards a new lease or the purchase of a car. For example, if your buyout price is $20,000, but the market value of the car is $23,000, you have $3,000 of equity in the lease car that can be used as a down payment towards a new lease or purchase. You could buy the car and then sell it to capture the $3,000 in cash, or you could just use the car as a trade-in to get that value. If instead you simply turn the car back in, then in this example, you'd be giving the lease company $3,000 that should be yours. Now let's look at a real life example. On the Toyota website now, they show a car deal on a 2024 Camry with a price of $28,915. Note that sales tax is charged on car sales and leases in most states, so I used the national average sales tax rate on cars of 5% in all examples. First, let's look at a lease. This is a 36 month lease with a monthly payment of $349. The lease has an annual mileage cap of 10,000 miles and an excess mileage fee of 15 cents per mile for miles over the limit. 
over three years, you would be allowed 30,000 miles total. If you drove 35,000 miles, the extra 5,000 miles would cost you 5,000 times 15 cents per mile, totaling an extra $750 that you would owe at the end of the lease. To lease this car, the total amount due at closing is $4,881, which is made up of a $650 acquisition fee, a down payment of $3,650, the first month lease payment of $349, and sales tax. Over the next 35 months, you would pay $366 per month. And finally, if you decide to return the car at the end of the lease and don't owe anything for excess mileage or excess wear and tear, then you would pay $368 for the disposition fee. Summing up everything, the total amount you would have paid over the term of the lease is $18,075. Now, this lease gives us the right to buy the car at the end of the lease for $16,068. I looked at Kelly Blue Book online to see what a three-year-old Camry in very good condition is worth today, and then added 2% per year for inflation to estimate what it might be worth when the lease ends. That gave me an estimated market value of $21,000 for a Camry in three years. So if, in fact, the Camry could be sold at the end of the lease term for $21,000, then you could buy the car from the lease company at the end of the lease for $16,870 and sell it on the market for $21,000, pocketing $4,130. Subtracting that from the $18,075 paid over the lease term and your total cost for the lease would be $13,945. Second, let's look at financing a purchase. For this, we're buying the car by taking out a loan to pay for it. In Toyota's current deal on the Camry, Toyota Financial Services is giving $1,000 for the down payment if we finance through them. The interest rate on the loan is 9.86%. An attempt to make this as close to an apples to apples comparison as possible, I selected a loan term of 72 months to make the monthly payment on the loan as low as possible. This made the loan payment $448 per month as compared to the lease payment of $366. Then at the end of 36 months, we sell the car and pay off the remaining loan balance with the cash received from the sale. At that point, with the, both the lease and the financing at the end of 36 months, I have no car and no more payments. Running through the numbers, at closing, we have to pay $3,650 for a down payment plus $1,446 of sales tax for a total payment of $5,096. Then we pay 36 payments of $448 per month for a total of $16,128. Adding these up, we will have paid $21,224 in total over the 36 months. At the end of 36 months, we then sell the car for $21,000 and pay off the remaining $13,899 owed on the loan, netting $7,101 after the payoff. Subtracting that from the $21,224, the total cost paid for the car by financing it is $14,123, which is slightly more than the $13,945 paid for the lease. This is the surprise. I expected the lease to end up being more expensive than financing the car, but actually it's a little cheaper in this case. Much of the time it will be more expensive with the lease. Just goes to show that you need to compare the numbers for both to see which one is better because you never know. Third, as a final comparison, let's look at just buying the car for cash. Like the other two options, you could buy it, own it for three years, and then sell it. At signing, you'd pay $28,915 for the car, plus tax for a total of $30,361. And then after three years, you'd sell it for $21,000, giving you a total cost of $9,361, which is much lower than both the lease and the financing. The higher cost of the other two is mostly due to interest charges. With interest rates as high as they are right now, both leasing and financing can be pretty expensive ways to buy a car. In researching for this video, I found a great resource on Edmunds. It's a table of fees and taxes charged when buying a car by state so you can see what is normal where you live. I'll link to the table in the video description. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and drop a comment below too. Your engagement helps the video a lot get distributed to other people. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.